Hello everyone, it's Davide here and welcome back to Learning Finance. In today's video guys, I want to make a follow-up video on Baidu stock. Uh, Baidu stock, which I made a video like five days ago, analyzing the stock, giving you my normal case scenario. The normal case scenario, which I put to an average fair price, which is exactly the price where the stock is today, basically just some cents below it. Anyway, that video, if you want to see the full analysis, I suggest you to just take a look at that. I want to show you the bull case scenario for Baidu so that you can understand the two different ideas and see what it takes to Baidu to actually reach the bull case scenario and eventual price targets that we can hit. The only thing I ask you guys as always is please and only like. It's very important. It's the only way to get it noticed and I thank you for it. And subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any new updates. Let's begin. All right, guys, so from the previous video, I showed you how actually Baidu can be fairly priced if we take into account the issue that they had, basically the growth has been quite flat since 2015. The company started very well, but then this growth stopped. And on average, if we take away 2017, this jump over there, we have a 5.84% in growth. So this is not typical of a growth stock, it's more typical of a value stock. And basically, Baidu today is priced as a value stock. When we take a look at what they do, actually, as I told you in the previous video, they have the core business, which is divided into marketing and non marketing. Now, the marketing part, which is the biggest one, it's the part that has not done very well, right? Uh, and that's kind of strange to understand from my point of view, because it just make you understand that Baidu search, okay? It, it has like the 78, 79% of the total market share in China, okay? So it, just think about that and then you see the growth and you're like, uh, how is possible, right? Uh, they also have a lot of other stuff Baidu have. I'm not going to go in through all of it. However, right now, the thing is that the Baidu core for the non-marketing part, so new AI business, Dueros, I told you, is a sort of uh, Amazon Alexa, okay, the platform voice assistant. And then that one, Apollo, which is basically a robot taxi network. Something like Tesla is trying to do in the US, Baidu is trying to do the same in China, supported by the government, which is a huge help and fundamental thing in China, right? We have seen what well, Alibaba the drop of Alibaba because it was not supported by the government at that point. So having the support of the government is definitely a plus. And then Baidu Cloud, which is obviously the cloud business is growing fast. It's growing fast everywhere in China as well, obviously. Also considering that they have 1.4 billion people living there. Whenever you think about US in China, you should like multiply it. Even though in terms of salaries on average, average Chinese people, they are still not as US people. But if they improve, obviously with that population, you see the improvements much more. So that's why basically everyone is bullish. And me, myself too, about the next 10, 15 years in the Chinese economy, because with that amount of population, even if you get slightly better, the impact is bigger than in a smaller country. So that's fair enough. Then what they have, they have IQY, right? Which is a sort of Chinese Netflix. By the way, that one hasn't done uh, well in terms of revenues. I mean, it has done well in terms of subscribers and stuff, but it looks like the monetization part, so how they get money from that, has not done really well. Then I showed you, obviously, the operating income declining, but they have positive margins everywhere. So that's a positive sign, even though the growth has not been uh, as good as it should have been for a tech company. Now, if you want to analyze the bull case scenario, what we have to think and what we have to actually understand is that Baidu, what it has done over the last five years, is just going to be something that will not happen anymore in the future. Uh, what I mean by that is pretty simple. You basically take these new AI businesses 
uh, which by the way now they are growing pretty fast in terms of revenue so not in terms of subscribers and stuff users in terms of revenues that part of the business is growing almost at 30 percent okay at least in 2020 so as i showed in previous video by the way that part of the business is just the 12 percent of it for the bull case scenario we have that first of all IQY and the marketing part of the business, so by the search, all this kind of stuff, they should retake in terms of growth. Okay, so because as of now they have been negative or flat, or especially in 2020, 2019. So that's not something that we want to see in a bull case. Maybe I don't expect this stream growth okay going on in the future but at least just if the chinese economy is forecasted to grow at eight percent over the next couple of years at least at ten percent right so if we just reach that point it would be massive for baidu because baidu is priced as a value stock so you have a firm involved in tech robot taxi all these kind of hot topics right hot market which are said to be the future but it's value uh, as a value stuff because like price to sales ratio now is like four compared to some us stocks that are priced like 20 25 price to sales ratio the difference what's the difference is not just undervaluation the difference is that obviously when you have that kind of growth for two years in a row uh, it's not the same to have 30 40 percent growth like for example tesla has done okay or other uh, us companies in that particular sectors but what we have to understand for baidu's bull case imagine the growth of the company going higher 2010 2012 then we have this kind of flat slash slow growth that we have seen until today. Now, for the bull case, this growth rate should take off again, thanks to new business divisions, new projects. So that's the bull case, because if the growth rate remains flat, then we can see the stock price basically moving sideways. But if that happens then in that scenario we can have a huge bargain today because if we believe in the growth rate taking off again we have a value stock that can become again a growth stock but today is priced as a value stock so i have changed the growth rate in order to understand this bull case scenario and here i made that basically baidu is gonna go from a six percent analysts estimate for 2021 so 17 growth then here analysts are saying that the growth will decrease again however in the book case i made that it will continue to grow as non-marketing core business take off so robo taxi dueros the cloud business and then the marketing part of the business so Baidu search, all this kind of stuff will continue to grow instead of remaining flat, right? In the next five, six years. So that Baidu overall can have a growth rate. Not crazy, but it can continue to have a growth rate similar to a growth stock and not to a value stock. So if we make that assumption, we see that 17%, then I put 19%. Then I put a 20% growth rate until 2025, right? So for that, and then decreasing it to 14%. The free cash flow margin, everything is the same as in the previous video. I just changed the growth rate. So by taking basically these two assumptions, the requirements are still a 14% discount rate. Now, why I use 14% discount rate? Because that's just something that it's fine for me for Chinese stocks. Because in China, it's you know that I already have a position in Chinese stocks and it's not an easy environment. We have a lot of rules. Plus, we have the issues with the US, so the listing issues, all this kind of stuff. In order for me to take all that risk, I want to be sure then I can beat the NASDAQ by taking an investment over there, right? And 14%, the NASDAQ on average has made around 10%, so I want to be well up over it. But if for you, it's okay, 12, you can try to do the same with 12, right? 
uh, perpetual growth rate 3.5 percent after 2028 now with that scenario i actually taken 18 12 percent so 18 percent growth until 2025 12 percent growth until 2028 and what we have is the bull case of the previous video so 272 dollars per share fair price today the bull case that i just showed you so 20 percent slash 14% until 2028, we have the fair price today of $308 per share. So you see how, if you believe in the growth rate of Baidu's taking off again, clearly the stock today is a bargain. Why? Because the stock today is priced on the fact that the growth rate of Baidu is going to be more similar to a value stock than a growth stock. So the investment thesis over there is all about if Baidu take off again, right? And do something similar to what they have done in the past when they were really a growth stock making like 30-40% every single year until basically 2010. Now, clearly, guys, if you don't agree with my 14%, so we what I like to take on as a margin, okay, so as a discount rate in order to be uh, okay, comfortable with the investment, you can say, you know what, I just want a 12%. And you can see how, look at that, the fair value, if you accept a lower rate of return as a discount rate it really explodes, okay? So this stock, considering a growth future instead of a value one, is absolutely a bargain today, if you agree with the bull case scenario. Now let's see a couple of price targets. So 2025, this is the bull scenario. So with a 20% growth, we can have revenues of around 40 billion, so 38.4 billion. Uh, the free cash flows are 8.5 billion with a margin of 28% as they have done in the past. The price target considering a free cash flow yield of 4.5%. Now in the previous video it was 5, now it's 4.5 because obviously if the growth takes off again then the multiples are actually getting bigger, right? That's how it works with growth stocks. Price target $551 in 2025. With a price to sales ratio of six, so still the same as previous videos, so nothing crazy. Growth stocks, they can be at eight, nine. Uh, we have a price target of $686 per share. Average, $619 per share. By 2025, there will be a return of 2.8x in basically four years and a half. So you understand that if Baidu manages making their growth rate, taking off again with all the projects that they have, Robotaxi, Cloud, Dueros, and then making the core business working again as it was in the past. Nothing crazy, just a 10% is enough. You have a stock that it can be a, an interesting investment, really, if you like the bull case. You are not going to see a lot of stocks in the US that can offer you that return in just a short amount of time, right? So that's what I think about Baidu. If you want to be more conservative, you can take my previous video. Uh, but by the way, it's still a stock that can offer you a great return. My only point that I made in the previous video, and I'm still thinking it, is that I'm not bearish on the company, okay? Because I think that people have misunderstood. When I told you that the fair price in the previous video was that with a 14% discount rate, by taking fairly low growth rates, I cannot be bearish on the company. I mean, that's the fair price, a very careful fair price, right? So conservative one. My point back in previous video, which I still believe it now, is that Baidu is trying to work on many different projects. Like they have this idea to work on many things, as many as possible, and then if they make one great, it's like the jackpot, okay? So because they, those are huge markets, if you look at the TAM, of Baidu with all their divisions together, you, you are well above the trillion dollar TAM. So it's a huge TAM. But my point was, uh, will they be able to deliver in a high quality in at least 
one or two of those big projects. Because considering the history, well, uh, it makes you wondering that. So that's what I was pointing out. But if you like the growth rate, I mean, if you believe that Baidu will do great, today you have a bargain, okay? So make your decision. It all depends on your risk, your diversification, your portfolio, how much you want to put in China. Remember that Baidu still has the same issues as Alibaba and all these kind of companies, right? But for me, it's fair enough to uh, to keep that risk if the stock actually has potential. So my only point is, will they be able to deliver? Well, if your answer is yes, then obviously today you have a bargain. So I hope that video is interesting for you. I hope it clears the full idea on Baidu stock with these two scenarios, a more normal one, a bull case one. Make your decision, guys. Leave me down a comment with what you think. Subscribe to the channel and as always, have a wonderful day.